Hi, first graders. Today we are going to read the last story out of The Adventures of Spider, written by Joyce Cooper Arkhurst and illustrated by Jerry Pickney. And the last story is called How the World Got Wisdom. Now, wisdom is another word for good sense. Nowadays, there is wisdom everywhere in the world, but there wouldn't be any at all if it hadn't been for Spider's accident. Would you like to hear a story about it? When the world was very new, Nayami, the sky god, gave all the wisdom in the world to Spider and told him to do whatever he wished with it. Of course, Spider wanted to keep it all for himself, and so he put it in a huge clay pot and covered it up tightly. How lucky am I to have all this good sense, thought Spider. One day I will become a king, for I will be the only wise man in the world. I must hide it carefully, where no one else can see it. Spider ran through the forest as fast as his eight legs would carry him, looking for a place to hide his pot of wisdom. Where are you going? asked the tortoise. Where are you going? asked the hare. And why are you in such a hurry? But Spider didn't answer. He just kept running, looking for a place to hide his wisdom before someone saw it and took some of it away from him. I know what to do, said Spider to himself. I'll hide my wisdom in the top of the tallest tree in all the world. At last he found just the tree. It was a great silk cotton tree. At the bottom, its roots came up above the ground and they were wide enough to hide an elephant. Its smooth trunk was wide enough for Spider's whole house. At the top, the branches spread out like an umbrella and they were covered with soft silvery leaves and a fine gauze that looked like cotton. It's the perfect hiding place, cried Spider. No one will be able to climb it because there are no branches near the ground. So Spider went back to the place where he had left the pot of wisdom and carried it to the foot of the great tree. Now the silk cotton tree is very hard to climb for its outside is as smooth as a finger. But Spider was sure he could climb it. For one thing, he had more legs than almost anybody else. People have two and animals have four, but Spider had eight. Spider tied the pot around his neck with a piece of strong rope so that it hung right in front of him. Then he made ready to climb. He put his two top legs around the trunk of the tree as far as they would reach. He put the next two legs around the top of the pot, two more around the bottom of the pot, and the last two under the pot. Spider pulled with his two top legs and pushed with his two bottom legs and held the pot with his four middle legs. My, but the pot was heavy. After all, it contained all the wisdom in the world. Little by little, he began to go upward. Spider was feeling very pleased when suddenly he slipped. In fact, he fell all the way back to the ground. Dear me, thought Spider, I have eight legs. Surely I can climb this tree. So he started again. He hugged the tree as tightly as he could and pushed and pulled with all his might. The pot was so heavy and his two bottom legs couldn't catch on under its weight. But this time, his luck was no better than before. He fell right back down to the ground. Spider was getting warm. 
and I'm afraid he was getting angry. He decided to try once again. So he pushed and pulled harder than ever. But the same thing happened. No sooner did he get off the ground than his middle leg slipped. Then his right upper leg slipped. And his left top leg slipped. And his right bottom leg slipped. And boom. Down came Spider, Pot and Wisdom, and all right on the ground again. Now this time, Kuma, Spider's eldest son, had been watching. Father, said Kuma, I have an idea. Hang the pot behind you instead of in front of you. Then you will be able to climb the tree. When Spider heard this, he knew that Kuma had some wisdom too and that he did not have all the wisdom in the world to himself. This made him so angry that he threw the pot to the ground. It broke into many pieces and the good sense poured out in all directions. It made such a noise that people came from everywhere to see what it was. Old women came from the market. Men came from the farms. Little boys came from their games and little girls ran out of the round houses. And when they saw the wisdom pouring out of the pot, they all reached down and took some of it. Even the animals got some. They spread it all over the world, in India and Spain and Panama, where it is always hot or where it is always cold, somebody has some wisdom because there was plenty to go around. Plenty for you and plenty for me. The end.